RBGFM, locals talking to locals. And he's been a very busy man as our Chris Farfoy, Labour Mana MP, and as I say, Minister of Consumer Affairs, Minister of Civil Defence, and Associate Minister of Immigration. We can't give you very many more names, otherwise we'll be here all day. Good morning, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Nigel, how are you? I'm well. You had to dash off up to Rotorua last Monday for that flooding. Uh, uh, Civil Defence, that's a big thing. You're really getting into it, aren't you? Yeah, look, um, for two reasons. I think it's important when um, councils call a, a local state of emergency that we seem to be getting in there as soon as we can and offering assistance. So um, still as a relatively new minister, it's interesting always to go and see firsthand what's going on. Um, but also, um, I think I may have already mentioned um, in discussions with you, Nigel, that uh, we're kind of going through a review of the civil defence system as a whole. So it gives us an opportunity to um, talk about what's happened recently and also some of the bigger picture changes that we're hoping to bring into um, civil defence. Um, it really is about modernising and putting some standards in there. So I guess regardless of where you are in the country, because there are 16 um, civil defence groups around the country, all based on basically regional council areas, um, that, the, that the standards are the same wherever you are. So um, if that group has to respond to an emergency, you know that the system is in place to make sure it's responded to effectively. Mm. What about the um, system you were trialled out with uh, the, the emergency signals coming through in your t- uh, cell phones, etc.? Have you gone any further with that? Yeah, there'll, there'll be another test um, this year. Um, I think it was November or early December last year where we um, tested the emergency mobile alert system. I think you probably remember that um, at the time um, it was only really available to about 30-ish percent of people with cell phones because of the different technology um, uh, in some of the phones. Um, and I think as we uh, get further along, the, as people upgrade their phones, we're hoping to get that to about 70 percent, uh, which would be about two and a half million phones, I believe. So it was really useful that the test went well, but there were some kind of issues with people's settings on their phones and things that we certainly learnt um, from our perspective um, in the system. So we got a, a hell of a lot of feedback. So um, the technical team have been kind of sifting their way through that to make sure that um, the next time around, before we do another test, because we'll do tests on a, on, a, on a regular basis, that people will get information about changing their settings on the phone if the phone's an issue. Uh, and certainly if there's anything at, at our end on our computer that we can change to make sure that as many people as possible get those alerts. It's been used two or three times recently, so... When a cyclone Gita hit um, up in the Taranaki area, um, there was a born water notice in place for some time and the uh, civil defence group up in Taranaki uh, used it quite a bit just to remind people that they had to boil the water because, um, as I've experienced, um, if you're coming in uh, to an area and there's a, something like a born water notice, um, you don't know unless someone tells you. So that's why when we got on the plane and turned our phones off uh, on, um, we got the emergency mobile alert to tell us that we weren't that we shouldn't treat the water that was coming out of the taps. Oh, right, OK. Water. Yeah. Well, that sounds fantastic. Housing, it's uh, becoming a big thing. Uh, we're getting any extra housing in our mana electorate? Um, th- there are some discussions underway, um, and I'm meeting with, uh, I think I'm having lunch, uh, with Mayor Guru this morning, and I think he'll be pushing one of those issues as well. Um, uh, as I think I may have mentioned, we've got 53 new confirmed homes in one particular um, be a piece of land in Potter East, which is good, but um, I think certainly for the discussions that I've had, um, we certainly need more. I mean, interestingly, um, when I'm tripping around the country on some of these civil defence issues, um, housing comes up uh, as one of the big issues. Um, so as long, along with the Kiwi Build program that we've got to build the 100,000 homes over the 10 years um, affordable for New Zealanders, I still think that you'll see probably uh, in next week's budget um, um, a, a rather large uh, announcement um, about our commitment to making sure that there's good affordable housing right around New Zealand. So one of my jobs uh, is to make sure that we get what is needed here in uh, the Manor electorate and, and uh, in the environs. So I think we've had an issue about not having enough social housing property for some time, so that's just something that I'm keen to make sure it gets progressed. I see you in Potorua, you're getting apartments right in the centre of town there, aren't you? Yeah, that's been the, 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 the aim uh, for a long time. Our mayor um, in Porirua, uh, Mike Tana, 
uh, led a discussion last week around the revitalisation of the city centre here. Um, anyone that's tripped to Porirua recently knows that um, there certainly has been some efforts um, over the last 10 or 15 years that unfortunately have gone nowhere. Um, so Mike has uh, injected some new life into that. Um, and certainly having some people living uh, in the central city would be good. There's um, a new um, housing development going uh, in, on the grounds of the old Kinapuru Hospital, which will also be good, but it's a good opportunity for the council and the likes of the Chamber of Commerce and developers and businesses to have that discussion now um, because we want to get a, a lot more life into the central city um, uh, and having people live in here is obviously um, important to that, but also having the likes of transport and amenities and safety uh, as part of that conversation was what the big meeting was uh, last week. Mm. And you've been chasing the banks along to make sure they're scrupulous. How's that going? And how are the banks yeah, well, treating it? Um, I think seriously, obviously off the back of what's happening in the Royal Commission into Banking in Australia, we're hearing some horror stories um, from over there. Um, as I've said, I, I haven't seen um, evidence of any, anything systemic over here. Um, we hear the odd complaint, um, and that's why the banking ombudsman is there. But um, I think interestingly, because of what's happening over in Australia, um, Rob Everett, who's um, the chief executive of the Financial Markets Authority, um, so basically the regulator of the, of the banks and the financial markets called all the banks' chief executives in last Monday to say, well, you say you're um, not dealing in any of this kind of behaviour, so he's asked a few pertinent questions to make sure that they can prove it. So um, I've seen the letter that he's asked um, the banks to um, to respond to, and hopefully, I think they're going to do that within the next couple of weeks. So um, hopefully that um, will prove um, that the fact that... Um, that we're a lot better behaved than our uh, cousins across the Tasman. Right. And as Associate Minister for Immigration, I suppose you're getting pressure on to bring more immigrants in with skills, are you? Yeah. Um, interesting. I was in Gisborne uh, on Friday. Um, they were certainly interested in making sure that they could have the skill sets in their region to, to meet the jobs uh, that are there. We've certainly talked about... Um, having regional targets uh, for specific industries, so they were happy to hear that. Um, Obviously, we had a a different policy around immigration uh, to the previous government. We were worried about uh, the numbers coming in, Um, and certainly from, uh, you know, low-quality tertiary educators bringing um, students in and that being a pathway uh, to residency or citizenship, so um, we promised to clamp down there. But we've said for some time that we think we need to do better um, if there are uh, skill shortages in the country and we need to bring in um, uh, that skill from overseas that we're keen to make sure we do a much better job of that. Um, I think my colleague here, Ian who's gone away not too far away from making a few announcements on that too. Great. All right. So I was talking to the Mayor this morning on radio and he said possibly uh, Labor's going to announce a major transport uh, issue, not issue, uh, project in Wellington to ease the traffic in Wellington. So is that coming up today or is it this week? Do you know about that? I don't that? know the time frame on it. That would probably came from a, a, a pretty good meeting we had with all the um, Wellington regional mayors. Um, I, think it was last, I think it was last Monday because I came back from Rotorua right. after that meeting. Um, I'm, I'm meeting with still twice a day today, so he might give me a heads up on that too. Right. <laughs> I see. All right, Chris. Well, you're up on the Kapiti Coast today, so um, anybody can still contact you, even though you are a busy man, on your office uh, number 0800 That's right. And if you forget that, it's just 0800 MANA MP on the keypad on your phone. So we're trying to make it, you know, Simple. I never know how to work that, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for ringing in. I appreciate your busy time. Thank you, Nigel. There we are, Chris Farr for you. 106.3 BGFM.